Welcome to Intuitive Astrology with Molly McCord. Thank you so much for joining me today as we take a look at the astrological energies from February 22nd until March 1st. Yes, we are closing out the month of February and we have some rather sweet and unusual energies this next week that we're going to be talking about in today's show. This is a podcast that I release every Monday and Wednesday. And in this Wednesday episode, we look at what's unfolding Holding for us right now in real time. What is coming up, what we're moving through, how to make the most of it, how to stay in your power and your choices, as well as to continue to amplify your light. And astrology is just one of many beneficial tools that taps us into our own consciousness, our own soul's journey, and also understanding what energies are unfolding right now on this human playground for us to consciously and intentionally work through and work with. Now, as the month of February closes out, it's actually very quiet in the skies. And what I mean by that is typically in this Wednesday show, we talk about the transiting planets. That is the energy that's moving around us at this time right now. And the transiting planets are often in multiple conversations with each other. They are having various interactions and energetic exchanges And that's what we discuss. So for example, on February 22nd, we have Mercury in Aquarius trining Mars in Gemini at 16 degrees. And I will talk about that in just a moment. But this is an example of the transiting energies, we call them aspects, about where the planets are, how they're interacting with each other. Well, over this next week, we don't have any aspects with the main planets, meaning it's quiet. There's a quietness in the cosmos. And this is about the general energy field. So even though there are no big aspects unfolding this week, you can still have transiting aspects happening in your personal natal astrology chart. And so this is where there are differences, of course, for each of us as well as in the collective. But this is going to be a week of really getting into more of what the Pisces themes are bringing up for you as the sun journeys through Pisces. And then it's going to feel perhaps like there's a lot going on in the background. There's a lot happening in the higher realms and the higher levels. And it could seem like your mundane daily life is about staying on task, maybe getting caught up with some things. It could even feel like you have more room and space to do what you need to do. And so this would be a week to look at what you do need to take care of, what is important. Perhaps, again, look at that to-do list, what's going on in front of you, you know, just making sure that nothing is forgotten or lost because that can actually be a theme during Pisces season when things seem to disappear or you could feel more forgetful, or you have to write things down in order to ground it and not forget what you need to take care of or what errands you need to run. So during the Pisces energies, we could feel like our energy is very active in other realms, that there's a lot happening in our intuition, in our spiritual expression, that we have these openings. And that's one of the gifts of Pisces season is that we do open up up to more energetics, to more ways of working with and feeling energies. We also can feel more sensitive. We could feel more emotional, more intuitive. These are all the beautiful gifts of Pisces season where we're able to tap into what we are energetically capable of outside of the physical world. Pisces is a water sign and it is the last sign in the zodiac wheel. So it also signifies what is closing out, what is clearing out, what you might even feel is gently moving away or even there can be this flow. Pisces is also 
wanting things to be comfortable. There's an energy of compassion and kindness with Pisces. So it's important to apply those energies to yourself, rather to integrate those energies into your own experience, to look at where you can be kinder to yourself, more accepting, more forgiving as well, where you can really step into owning your humanness and then being very aware of how imperfect it is to be human, how it can be very tangled at times, how there's things that come up that can really trigger us or bring us to various places of our own energy. But Pisces season is also about calming that down, calming down the ego, calming down the mind, allowing ourselves to just be fully who we are without struggling, without creating any more tension or pressure. Also, there's this energy in Pisces season of giving yourself more downtime allowing yourself to detach, disconnect, step away so that you can tend to perhaps other parts of your energy. Also, perhaps you're just realizing Your body consciousness wants you to take a break. Your mind, if it's been overworked, overwhelmed, overstimulated, might need a rest as well. So this Pisces energy certainly helps us with our self-care, certainly helps us in recalibrating what is important, what is essential, and to allow other things to just float away, to just dissolve and not be such a big deal. And that could be one way too that this Pisces energy feels supportive, where if something was really big for you, like it was front and center, it had a lot of energy around it, perhaps it had a lot of emotion around it, or it was just really built up. This is where Pisces season can help you separate that out or even allow the energy to flow out. It's sort of like when the energy feels really big and then it has this diminishing effect or it starts to feel like it dissolves, like, okay, this isn't such a big deal anymore. I know I'm safe. I know I'm in my power. I know I have multiple choices. Pisces will open you up to more choices, more choices that the mind wouldn't logically or rationally tune into, opens you up to more than perhaps what your ego or sense of self would have expected or planned. Pisces takes us out of the human realms. It invites us into more of our soul's frequency, more of the innate possibilities that are unlimited in the universe, more of what you're sensing and feeling that you can't touch, you don't know the details, you don't know the how, but you could sense that it feels good. It's rising up within you. There's something even that could feel very comforting around these energies. So keep in mind that this Pisces season is meant to help us clear out, like really deeply clear out what you've already been aware of that's leaving, what you've already closed out, whether those are parts of previous experiences, maybe old belief systems or an older expiring sense of self. Perhaps it could feel like you're also closing out some bigger energies in your world around karmic cycles, previous versions of yourself and also other parts of your soul's experience in this lifetime that have served their purpose and now they're done. You could feel like there are endings to soul contracts. You could feel like there's no longer energetic connections. You could feel like there's a sense of, okay, these are not individuals or people that I meant to travel with for another cycle. And that's part of when we know things are clearing out is that you feel that disconnect and it's energetic. So it's not maybe something that you're deciding per se and maybe isn't something that you've actively decided or said, okay, this is done, but you're just sensing the energetics are communicating what is over and what is complete because there are no longer those energetic connections. There isn't that same match in terms of vibration or frequency. And this can be in any and all areas of your life, meaning this could be as simple as noticing anything in your immediate environment that doesn't give you life. It doesn't energize you. You just realize, yeah, I don't really like that 
picture hanging on my wall anymore. It doesn't do anything for me. I'm kind of over it. And that's where you could sense that something is being removed. But then there are the energetics in play here that are about the bigger picture of noticing how you have evolved in the past year. And this I feel is one of the gifts of this week. Because as I said, it's a very quiet week where there are not many transiting aspects between the planets. So there is a sense of listening, being reflective, tuning in, tapping in, really going into what has this last cycle of energy shown me? And when I'm saying last cycle, I'm referring to the full 12-month astrological cycle, which started last March during the Aries equinox. And that's when the astrological new year occurs every year. So that would be a full 12-month cycle. But you could even be feeling that it's a bigger cycle. Maybe it's a five-year cycle or a 10-year cycle for you. This is where it can be quite personal. But this is also where we're noticing what is turning over, where there is no longer a need to have certain things in your life or to connect or relate or contribute your energy to things that no longer support what you're all about, what you want, what you need. And this is a week where, again, you could feel that there are things you're understanding about what you were learning, what you were healing, what you were understanding about your energy and your experience experiences. And this could also be a time when you're just being very loving to yourself around what you've been through. And perhaps we don't do that enough, especially in our busy modern world. We don't just stop and put our hand on our heart and really acknowledge, love, and accept ourselves for what we have been through on this wild human journey that is not easy, that is not simple, that stirs up so many energies. And we've been living in a period of time with many big energies. So this would be a beautiful time to really tap in to your internal energies, to your heart, to your seven chakras, and to really go into, I'm seeing it as this beautiful rose-colored energy that's downloading in, that's coming in. It's very kind, loving, and soft. And it's sort of like this warm blanket or this energetic reassurance that you've done things so well, that you've really been aware of what you've been learning and healing It feels like this very comforting energy. I'm even feeling it connected with a very high level divine feminine energy that wants us to come back to ourselves with loving kindness, that wants us to really be in a place of giving ourselves exactly what we need, whether that is radical forgiveness and deep acceptance. Maybe it's a sense of really acknowledging what you've been learning, how you've been growing, and to also let yourself off the hook for the things that have been more intense, troubling, or hard, and to understand that all we can expect of ourselves sometimes is to do our best, just to do our very best, and to keep going in that energy field. There's also a very prominent energy here associated with Kuan Yin, the goddess of compassion, the goddess of mercy. And I'm also seeing this as a lotus flower in the crown chakra. So as always, take what resonates or follow the energy of what is calling to you. But there is huge spiritual support right now for this part of the cycle that we're moving through, as well as what we're trusting in ourselves, that it's okay to let go. It's okay to release. It is safe to let go. It's safe to allow some things to fall away, to be complete, to be over. And there can be emotions that come up with all of that. There can be a part of you that doesn't want something to end. There can be a part of you that is fully 100% ready for it to be over. There could be a duality within you of feelings and experiences. So know that there is significance here where we claim what we've been learning spiritually. We tap further into our soul's frequency of truth, wisdom, brilliance. This is a frequency 
that is open to all the ways you can grow, open to all the ways you can heal. And now I'm seeing it returning to that lotus flower blooming and opening, where in order to bloom and open, there has to be a trust in releasing. The energy has to naturally, it's like this organic opening that also not only allows new energy to come in and arrive, but a sense of freedom and liberation around what you're releasing, around what is closing out, and how you're allowing it to do so in a very graceful way. Perhaps it doesn't feel graceful every day, especially if it's been a big chapter in your life or something very significant. It can feel very choppy. It could feel very, again, tangled or messy at times. But returning to this very pristine, gorgeous energy that's opening, it's an understanding that you can trust yourself to take what you need and leave the rest. Trust what you need and allow everything else to dissolve, to transmute, to be released, and then come back in a new form or a new experience at a higher frequency. Part of the Pisces experience is that we don't take a lot with us. We surrender it. We surrender what is no longer essential. And we have a higher spiritual understanding of what we're choosing to travel with. What are you actively choosing to take forward? forward to really embrace and claim because it is a truth for you. It is resonating within you, deep within your soul, and it doesn't even require words. It doesn't require that the mind understands it. It doesn't require the ego to give two thumbs up. It's sort of this energy of, no, this is truly the essence that is resonating with me and what I want to further activate, and also how I want to flow forward. So very strong theme here on these closings and endings. And that's not only because we have the sun moving through Pisces, we also have Neptune in Pisces. But what I feel is really significant about this week and going into March is that we're also seeing the closing out of energies related to Saturn in Aquarius and Pluto in Capricorn. They are both moving to 29 degrees of each sign this week. And this is also territory that they haven't been at yet. So the last time we had Saturn at 28, 29 degrees of Aquarius was nearly 30 years ago in the early 1990s. And the last time we've had Pluto in these very late degrees of Capricorn would have been in the late 18th century. And so we have these planets that are actually closing out layers of our experiences. And that's how I'm seeing it. I'm seeing that there is a Saturn in Aquarius layer that is closing out. I'm also seeing it as this Pluto at 29 degrees of Capricorn layer closing out. Now, Pluto is gonna come back to 29 degrees later this year and in 2024. But Pluto is reaching this degree point for the first time in nearly nearly 250 years. So we have a very interesting energy here of cleaning up, completing, graduating, up leveling, preparing for the next step, the next chapter, but there's layers of it. And the other thing that's interesting here is that both Saturn and Pluto are in these new degree points. As I said, it hasn't been in these parts of your chart for a very, very, very long time. We also have Jupiter now in new degrees of Aries. Jupiter is in 10 degrees and moving forward of Aries where it hasn't been for 12 years. So we have a very strong theme here with these outer planets that are in new territory 
And also, we have Saturn and Pluto asking you to be very honest with yourself around what is complete, what is over. And again, it goes back to the energetics. There's something energetically that has shifted and evolved in you. I'm actually seeing it at a cellular level. And this is individual, of course, for every person. So simply take what resonates. But I feel like there's something around understanding what you have deeply shifted within yourself because of your work effort, what you've really dug into and understood about yourself, what you have healed, what you have come to understand that you don't want anymore within yourself. The parts of yourself that have evolved, the parts of yourself that have grown and really perhaps understood more of your own consciousness and your own potential. And that's why it's a very interesting mix perhaps of sensing what is leaving that you're not returning back to, that there are parts of yourself you're not ever going to basically animate or participate in anymore. There's parts of yourself that have energetically shifted, again, at a cellular level. And that's why this doesn't feel mental, logical, or rational. It feels much more energetic. It feels much more about how we've really been required to deeply look at some things, you know, to face ourselves, to look at what we have been perhaps unconsciously choosing and to make it conscious and then to really understand understand that part of the joy of this journey, part of how we're meant to feel supported and loved and guided is when we tap into these energetics, we really go into what we're feeling and sensing and we allow that to help us navigate on this journey. And this is so It looks pretty cute, actually. It looks like at a cellular level, there's these little lotus flowers blossoming. It looks like there's things just coming alive because now there is room and space for a new part of your own consciousness to emerge. And that's what I'm feeling as well, especially as we move into March, that there are energies here that you're meant to fully integrate and own and to step into it. And we're going to keep going through these energetic practices into March and April, where we have even more big energies picking up and coming through. I mean, these eclipses coming up, wow, huge, big, and very potent and significant. So this is a time right now to really tune into your own energy field, to really tune in to acknowledge what you have worked through, what you have healed. Again, it feels like some kind of graduation turning point. And part of that turning point is a significant release that is even being exfoliated as we sleep, as we meditate, as we shut down the mind and allow some other parts of our energies to be louder and stronger. And so you could have some very powerful meditations or channeled messages. You could have some really big dreams coming in, some really big downloads that validate you, that reveal what you have shifted and changed. I'm also feeling like part of what is rising up within us is this lightness. And I feel it as the light body, the crystalline body. I feel it as these light codes that are alive and bouncing around and energized and ready to go. I feel it as a lightening of light and that it's meant to both elevate and alleviate us in some way. And so you could feel a lightness. Maybe there was something that was stressful. It was big. It was challenging. And now it just doesn't bother you. Now you just could care less. Now it isn't even something in your frame of reference because of how much you have evolved energetically and how much you've shifted through those deeper energies. I do feel this across lifetimes. I feel like there is programming and belief systems that we are evolving that we've really been in for multiple lifetimes. It does feel that significant. 
it does also feel that fresh and new where you could just have a sense of I'm in new territory for myself. And that could be part of the lightness and the lightening up is that you've completed some very big karmic cycles or energy signatures that have traveled with you across multiple lifetimes. And one of the best and highest ways that we close out these cycles is we understand what we chose to heal, what we chose to learn, what we chose to experience for our own best and highest good. And of course, this is where the mind and the ego comes in and say, oh, well, I would not have chosen that or I would not have wanted that experience or that lesson. But that's the human perception. The spiritual perception is always connected to greater love, greater respect for your energy, understanding what you're capable of and what you can move through. And this is part of the Pisces journey where we recalibrate our humanness with our spiritual selves. And there can be a new alignment here between what your spiritual self is wanting your human self to understand and to know. So again, stay open to those messages, to those downloads, to whatever might be coming through for you because the energy is especially heightened right now. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning here of the show, we do have a few transits happening that are actually more everyday energies. So we have this Mercury in Aquarius trining Mars and Gemini at 16 degrees. This happens on February 22nd. It's a fast moving energy where it can be easier to say what you need to say. There is a sense of I'm going to take this and move it forward. I know where I'm going. I know what I want. This could be something where things just click and you have an idea and it just has a solid yes to it. And that Mars and Gemini kind comes in and gives you the information to make it happen or make it real. So that happens on February 22nd. Then we don't have anything else going on until March 1st. And on March 1st, what a beautiful energy to welcome in the new month. We have Venus conjunct Jupiter. This is happening at 11 degrees of Aries in your chart. So 11 degrees of Aries is where Venus is going to be conjunct Jupiter, amplifying these Venus expressions and Venus qualities. What's interesting is that Venus is in her detriment in Aries, which means she is more about doing her own thing. She is independent. She likes to take charge. She's a pioneer. She's ready to just kind of do what calls to her and to trust that. She isn't necessarily looking for others' input or others' idea. So there could be a sense here as we approach approach the last day of February and the beginning of March, that there's something within you that you really want. You're really feeling it. You're really trusting it. And it could bring in a new life force. And that is a strong energy signature of Aries is that you just receive a very clear yes. So trust whatever yes is showing up for you. Again, 11 degrees of Aries in your natal chart, whichever house you have that in is where the yes is coming through, is where the energy could also feel big. It could feel like it flows and it's open and it's enjoyable. Venus is associated with feminine energies, so that can be friends, sisters, girlfriends, wives, siblings, co-workers, any feminine energies in your world, but also feminine energies within yourself. And as Venus is conjunct Jupiter, there is an exaggeration. There's also a sense here of making sure we don't get too big for our britches. We don't think we can do everything or that we can take it all on. So with Jupiter, we always want to stay mindful of how we moderate, but something could just feel like an easy, yes, I want this. I'm going to go for it. And in Aries, it is about initiating an energy. So there's energy around us that is welcoming in these new starts and fresh beginnings. Aries moves fast, and so it could feel like it moves fast faster than you anticipate or that you thought. It could also feel like it's just a very easy opening. And keep in mind, we have these layers 
in the background closing out, right? As I mentioned earlier, we have Saturn closing out in Aquarius and Pluto moving through the final degree of Capricorn. And so as things are closing out, it's almost like dropping away and just maybe even feeling that there are voids, there are openings, there is an uncertainty, but I'm feeling like the other layer here is very strong and clear yes energies where there's something that could even feel too easy. Now, this is interesting because if you've been through a chapter or a period of time that has been a struggle and you've been applying the work and doing it and showing up and, you know, sludging through it, we kind of get into this expectation of programming that it's going to be hard or that something you just got to keep doing it and then eventually it'll pay off. This particular energy that I'm tapping into can feel too good to be true where you're like, how is it this easy? I don't remember it being this easy. And that is part of this energetic reset. Okay, there's an energetic reset that we are moving through and it's different for everyone, but there's something that is such a clear yes that if you trust your gut, if you're trusting your body consciousness, if you're trusting the energy that's speaking to you, that if you just say yes and you're ready to step into the magic of the yes. There is like this whole new sparkly experience. I mean, I'm seeing sparkles. I'm seeing it as these really beautiful light codes dancing around, swirling around, almost like you've just entered into a new environment, a new space, a new territory, a new wonderland. And so there's something that we're meant to move into I also feel this as some type of universal reward, something that the universe is recognizing in your journey that, yeah, things have been tough. Things have been hard. We've all been through a lot, especially in the past number of years. But there's also these energetic inputs that happen where the universe comes in and it's like, bam, here you go. Here's your little sparkly gift or incoming, this is for you, it has your name on it because of what you've allowed to fall away, where you've trusted, where you've surrendered and where there's now room, there's now energetic room for something new to come in and land. So there's energies here that could feel like You are in between worlds. You're in between experiences. There's these overlapping areas and energies that look like a Venn diagram. A Venn diagram where you have two circles, three circles, four circles, and they overlap in certain places. That's what this looks like. And I'm also feeling like the stronger energy is definitely in the beginnings because they are right on time. But I feel this as a flow. I feel it as an energy that just flows in. Again, something that seems really easy, really effortless, and also a sense of allowing the universe to surprise you, allowing the universe to reward you and to recognize you. So part of that Venn diagram or the overlapping energies, I see it as both the masculine and feminine energies overlapping. I feel it as the giving and receiving overlapping. I feel it as a sense of trusting what is easy and not feeling like you have to force the river or that something has to be pushed forward. Now, I mentioned how both Saturn and Pluto are at 29 degrees of each sign that they're in. So Saturn is at 29 degrees of Aquarius. Pluto is at 29 degrees of Capricorn. Saturn actually gets to 29 degrees of Aquarius starting on February 27th. And this feels big because Saturn isn't returning back here for another 28 years. And so there is a completion of Aquarius energies in your chart. And that does feel even more significant because there is something that relates to your future self that maybe you've been working through or reprogramming. Okay, this is random. I'm seeing a robot. I'm seeing a robot with reprogramming happening internally. I'm seeing it as a rewiring. This feels like a recalibration to 
a new operating system, similar to how our computers and electronics have an internal operating system, this is some kind of upgrade. Upgrading that internal operating system, really having more clarity of who you are at an individual frequency level. And that's part of the Aquarius journey is that we understand how we're different and that's exactly what's needed. That's exactly what is essential and that's how we can make some of our most impactful contributions is by fully owning your individual frequency. And so Aquarius is associated with astrology, numerology, metaphysics, human design, all of these and more that are about understanding who you are at a unique level of your being. Also understanding what energies you are embodying in this lifetime to journey with as well as to actively raise your consciousness around. So this feels like it could be a week of seeing how far you've come seeing how far you've traveled, understanding a bigger picture perspective of your journey, looking at what you have really understood about who you are, your gifts, your capabilities, what brings you joy and happiness, what brings in a sense of empowerment, also connecting with more of yourself at a energetic level that is deeply connected to all that is, that is deeply connected to all of the energies that you've been through. And now I'm seeing a really long timeline of soul experiences. This could be a week and even moving into March that you're getting a sense of more of who you are and more of who you are not more of who you are not, rather, let's say more of who you've been, the various versions of yourself, the various expressions of consciousness that you've embodied, that you've been. I feel again, going back to these layers of energies, there's some big significant shifts here that we're meant to really acknowledge because these are rare shifts. These are rare cycles closing out simultaneously. And it feels like there could even be something that maybe you don't see in the moment, right? Maybe it's not this week that you notice it. Maybe, you know, you've got too much going on. There's a lot to take care of. It feels like you're really active. But maybe it's later on that you look back and be like, wow, I have really deeply evolved. I'm really noticing what has changed and what has moved through me. And I do feel these energies are preparatory. There is a preparation happening here. This is where we are continuing to move higher up the spiral. And as we move into March, April and beyond, there are energies that are going to come in that are going to be very fresh and new. So keep in mind that part of what we are experiencing at this time as February closes out is finding peace with our journey, finding an internal peace with your journey, a peace around what you've been through, who you've been, the various versions of yourself, the various versions of your life, the various parts of your energy. I feel like this is a peace within that also is being elevated because now I'm seeing this Quan Yin energy again that raises the vibration with compassion and self-acceptance. And then part of this piece within is connected to that Venus conjunct Jupiter in Aries at 11 degrees that initiates the new energy, brings in something that elevates you, lifts you up, feels good to the heart. Uh, That is something that Venus is connected with. Venus wants us to feel good about who we are, to feel worthy and valued. This is the energy signature of loving yourself, feeling confident in who you are, And then something could come through that validates that and supports it. So we have a beautiful start to March with this Venus conjunct Jupiter in Aries. You will feel it most personally if you have planets or points. I'm going to say around 9 to 13 degrees of Aries. 
Also, 9 to 13 degrees of the fire signs, so that is Leo and Sagittarius. Also, 9 to 13 degrees of Gemini and Aquarius. So these energies are helping us with the new parts of ourselves that we are fully owning, we are fully embracing and trusting, and there's this strong universal inflow as well that demonstrates and recognizes what you need, what you're ready for, and the new beginnings that are ultimately right on time. Even if they feel too good to be true, this happens too easily, this was too simple, this was really fast. I mean, there's a simplicity to the Aries energy. It's not complicated. It's sort of this sense of, okay, this is a yes. I'm going to trust it. Let's go for it. And there's also a sense here, though, of owning your own magic, owning your own sparkles, owning, you know, what you know has your name on it without the mind overriding it or shutting it down or pushing it away or dismissing it. But if by chance that is something coming up in you, if something comes up and you're like, this is too good to be true, I don't believe it, I'm not going to trust it, then the universe is going to honor your free will. The universe honors whatever you're deciding for yourself. And those decisions can be very much based on your unconscious belief systems, where perhaps you have a belief system that says, I have to work really hard in order to earn something, or I have to do a lot in order for something to come through. And you can look at that and determine, is that still what you want in your own internal operating system? Is that still true for you? Or do you want to elevate that and call in a higher understanding that the universe recognizes how much you have earned or the work you've done and that this is about receiving? How well can you receive? How well can you allow something to come through or come in that is perhaps a beautiful gift and you can simply receive? You can simply say thank you. You can tap into that frequency of gratitude and allowing things to come through that are for your best and highest good or that also validate that the universe has witnessed your journey. You know, the universe is witnessing it now across multiple timelines and dimensions of time. So understand that... Sometimes all we have to do is lean back and receive. Again, this goes to the feminine energies. This goes to that ability to be receptive. And I also find it fascinating how when we look at the zodiac wheel, Pisces is the last sign of the zodiac, and it is a feminine energy. It is a completion. It's allowing that energy to move through where we reflect, we unravel, we let go, we receive. And then the astrological wheel begins with the Aries energy, which is masculine. So everything is always in a beautiful synergy and harmony when we work with these cosmic ebb and flows. And that is one of the gifts of astrology is that we tune into what is coming through, what is coming up. We don't have to figure it all out with our minds, but we can also tap into the bigger cosmic cycles that we are most definitely feeling and sensing. And that's how I see astrology is that it is an energy system of consciousness. And when you tune in to that consciousness, it's switching the dial from AM to FM. It's switching the dial to a higher, more potent frequency that allows you to use these other parts of your energy that support you on this very crazy and wild human journey. In astrology, we have various cycles of our energy that we're experiencing all at once. We have the current daily energies. We have the transiting energies that unfold across months and years. You have the energy of your solar return chart, which is the energy on your birthday every year that plays out over 12 months. We also have the energy of your progressed chart, which is another timeline of your life experiences. Your progressed chart reveals more about what you signed up for in this lifetime, 
where you have milestone years, pivotal life changes, where your energy is moving at a different speed in a separate timeline. And I have a course for you on that, on how to understand that in yourself. I show you what to look for, what your assessing. We talk about your pivotal milestone years in the progress chart. We look at the different aspects and transits going on. So it's another way to tune in to what your soul is signed up for in this lifetime and how it's designed to play out on that timeline. So please check out that course. I'll put a link below this podcast. It is much more of an intermediate to advanced level course. So it's not for beginners. And it is important that you already understand some of what it means to look at an astrology chart. It's important to understand the language of astrology and how the energies interact. So check that out if you're interested in going further into your energy. Look at how to read your progressed astrology chart, which can be incredibly eye-opening. And then in addition, we also have astral cartography, which is the energy of where you live, which is where your energy is on the planet and what comes up for you. What are the big themes in this part of the world for you, where you live, where you grew up? This is also very eye-opening if you've traveled a lot, if you've moved a lot of places. Your astral cartography shows you how your energy resonates and expresses itself in various parts of the world. If you want to check that out for yourself, you can do so for free over at the website called astro.com. You just make a free account. You enter in your birth details. You have access to all these awesome astrological tools, including your astral cartography. And on that website, you would look in the drop-down menu under locational astrology, and that will show you more about those specifics for yourself. And the reason why I recommend astro.com is because it's written by professional astrologers, and the resources they use are based on credible astrologers as well. There are other websites and apps that will teach you about astrology and perhaps connect you with their astral cartography as well. So trust whatever is best for you. But do look at this for yourself because it can be quite eye-opening. As always, thank you so much for joining me today. It's a joy to connect with you every Monday and Wednesday. I'll be back on Monday for another podcast episode. I'm also excited to see So many of you in Sedona, Arizona coming up the first weekend of March. We're going to have a great time. And I will be pre-recording my podcast episodes so that even though I'm traveling, I'll still be here for you. I will still be releasing these episodes and giving you information. Thank you so much for joining me. You can find out more about me at mollymccord.online. That's where you'll find all of my programs, courses, and offerings. I'm also on Instagram. Facebook, and YouTube. And on YouTube, be sure and check out my playlists because there is a ton of content there that helps you dig into your astrology chart even more. Wishing you a beautiful final week of February. I hope you are feeling these powerful energies in a beautiful way. And I will look forward to connecting with you again very soon. Take good care.